this is the front of my friend Greg's Grand Banks uh, 42 and I don't know whether it was him or somebody added on to the anchor um, pulpit just to have two anchors I believe which put the windlass back here so now the windlass no longer drops the chain into the hose pipe and really very seldom on a boat do they actually work correctly my old boat never did um, so he wants me to make something to get the chain to go in the hole that's why I cut this mess so this is a piece of a mess that was on my nephew's boat that was sunk in Katrina or during Katrina or Katrina sunk it and we went and retrieved the mast before the Trecos um, ripped all the boats out to harbor and I made this for my wooden Grand Banks. It had a mast and a boom for a steady sail and it was wooden and it was in terrible shape so I was going to replace it with this wooden with this aluminum one. Spent a bunch of money having welds done I, I couldn't weld back then and ended up not liking the looks of it so I fixed the wooden mast. But anyway I'm going to cut this up and use this for a trough for to guide the chain into the chain locker. That's my goal. My power tools are kind of like me. They're all wearing out. Um, my miter saw, the blade guard, will not retract by itself, so I have to pull it back, which is probably unsafe because I have to let go of my workpiece, but eventually I will uh, repair this and all of my other tools that have like issues that I just haven't taken care of. So in order to cut the mast free from all these appurtenances, I had to kind of prop it up on a bunch of blocks and keep the mast level with the base of the miter saw, which, uh, which I did. And I now have square ends on the um, mast part that I cut loose. So I've clamped this board to it to keep it from rolling around. I'm going to rip it with a table saw and flip it over and rip, rip both sides, one side at a time. Okay, so I'm going to use this for a trough. Um, I'm going to have to plug that hole. It's not going to be at a very steep angle because it's such a long ways from the where the windlass drops the chain and the opening to the chain locker. Um, I think as long as there's chain going into the chain locker, the weight of the chain will pull the chain down the slope and everything will be lovely. I think if you ever pull out past the chain to the rope to the road, the weight of the rope will not pull the chain down the slope and you're going to, it's going to pile up here and be a rat's nest, but it's already doing that. Um, and that's kind of why I wanted to have an open top here instead of a closed top. Because if you get in that situation, it's, it's right here. You can just reach your hand in there and straighten it out. And his controls for his windlass are right there by the windlass. So I think this will be manageable. Um, so what I'm going to need to do is clean it up, patch these holes, round these edges, and I want to the end by the uh, by the hose pipe going into the uh, anchor locker. I want to double or triple this thickness because I want it to be <coughs> really round and smooth, where the chain links can't catch it when you're going out when you're trying to feed chain out. So this is kind of a sharp corner, and chains love to hang on stuff. So I will. Um, I wanted to kind of put a pipe on the end of this to kind of round it over. But we'll see. I'm gonna, somehow or another, I'm going to smooth that edge up. So I brought the trough back to the boat, and I was distracted. Somebody came to help me, so I caught absolutely no video. But what I did was I kept cutting the ends at the slopes that I thought it needed to be, and I gradually got it shorter and shorter until I think I have it the right length with the right angles on the end. 
it's kind of hard to tell at first that's why I did a bunch of smaller cuts because not only is it sloped but it's canted away so anyway I got it pretty close and now brought it back to the shop so I've cut a doubler and a tripler this is the bottom edge and I plan to weld this all up and then grind it big round surface big round curve so it's not so important when the chain's falling in the hole because it'll go in the hole it's when you're trying to feed chain out I don't want it grabbing on this edge or this edge the original edge but with uh, the three layers I can put a pretty good bullnose on there so I think I'll take care of that I've got these two extra strips welded on and I got the end rounded over and on this end I have two um, little flanges to screw it both of these have to be a little shorter and I'll drill holes this connection at the bottom will have to be bolted when I get there because I'm just not so sure about which angle to put it but let's go put some chain on it and see if it uh, goes over the edge smoothly without catching It is aluminum and the chain is steel so it is not going to last forever it's going to wear but considering uh greg's age and the age of the boat and a few times he anchors out it's pretty much a permanent solution for him okay we're back at the boat and i am fitting the trough or the diverter and it fits and i don't have to cut the long flanges off so originally I was thinking it would kind of be up in the air kind of like that and it had to be up in the air enough for the little top to close but actually looking at it it fits pretty good just laying right there so I'm gonna put a uh, I'm gonna try to get one screw up under the bottom in one of these flanges and then we're gonna look at the bottom and see how I can brace the bottom up It works right where it is. I'm going to put the other two screws in the top part and put a brace on the bottom. So I brought a couple of spare pieces of aluminum not knowing which one would fit the best because I knew I wanted to brace this off of this. I ended up using that little flat bar and I got it screwed through the bottom and I got through bolted there and everything's lovely. I can even pretty much close the top good bit of the rain out not all of it so I think mr. Gray's gonna be happy